Outcomes Pre-Intermediate Workbook by Carol Nuttall and David Evans Published by National Geographic Learning Part of Cengage Learning Copyright 2016 1.1 1. 1. Part 1 I'd like to welcome Megan Bradshaw to the studio this morning. Megan, thanks for coming in. Good morning, David, and thank you for inviting me. Megan, you're a firefighter. Now, there aren't many women firefighters, are there? Well, the answer to your question is yes and no. Most firefighters are men, but that is changing. There are now over 200 women firefighters in London. Over 200? Mm. I'm surprised. And how long have you been a firefighter? About four years now. I joined the fire service as soon as I left school. Really? So what does the job involve? What do you have to do? Well, most people think that firefighters only put out fires. Obviously, we have to put out fires, but only one in five calls is actually for help at a fire. Really? Only one in five? So, if only one in five calls is about fires, what do you do most of the time? We rescue a lot of people and animals. So, for example, we go out to road and train accidents. And because these are accidents, we do a lot of first aid and look after any injured people. I see. And what do you do if you aren't fighting fires or at the scene of an accident? Do you just sit around drinking coffee? <laughs> no, not at all. It's a very hard job, so you have to be very fit. We do a lot of fitness training. We train every day. Um, we also check the fire engine and our equipment. <laughs> I see. And what other work do you do? Education is a big part of the job. Education? Yes. Fighting fire is also about education. We go out a lot, to schools and to businesses. We give a lot of talks about safety. It's important that people know about fires and how to stop them. So <laughs> there isn't much time for coffee. One point two. Part two. You seem to be busy all the time. So, do you enjoy the job? Yeah. I enjoy rescuing someone from a fire or a car accident. It feels great when you help someone. I also like giving talks in schools and talking to the children. I work in a team of six people, and that relationship with my teammates is also important to me. Uh, the variety of work is good as well. And are there any things you don't like about your work? Yes, some. The job is hard, um, physically and emotionally. The most difficult part of the job is when someone dies in a fire or a car accident. That is hard, very hard. If that happens, we are all upset for days. Yes, that is still the most difficult part of the job. Yes, that must be terrible. Yes, yes it is. Oh, and I really don't like writing reports. We have to write a lot of them, on fires and accidents. Nope, I don't like that, but it's part of the job. Well, Megan, thank you very much for coming in this morning. It's been very interesting finding out about the work you do and... Uh... One point three, one point four. Go to a meeting. Work from home. Negotiate a deal. Do research. Make a proposal. Make someone an offer. Sign the contract. Employ new staff. 2.1 For most of us, shopping is a leisure time activity. However, this is not true for everyone. On the show this morning are two guests who have a medical problem called compulsive shopping disorder. 
this means they can't stop shopping. In fact, some experts think that 10% of British people are compulsive shoppers. Yes, an amazing 10%. Maria Lomax, you've had this problem for over 10 years. How did it start? Well, Larry, I didn't know it was a problem until I realised I couldn't stop buying things. I wasn't happy unless I was shopping. Then I started having money problems, and this caused arguments with my husband. He finally made me go to see a doctor. Really? That's awful. And how bad did the problem get? Well, to give you an example, when I went into a shop and found a top I liked, I used to buy it. But not one top. I'd buy one in every colour. I have 50 bags of clothes in my wardrobe. That's 50 bags of clothes that I've never worn. I also have 135 pairs of shoes. 135 pairs of shoes? Really? Amazing. OK, can I now turn to you, Keith? Can you tell us about your problem? Do you buy too many clothes? Clothes? No. But I do have 104 pairs of trainers. Most of them I've never worn. Oh, you're joking. Do you do a lot of sport, then? No. I go running twice a week, but I just like trainers. But the problem started with books and CDs. I bought lots of CDs, hundreds of them. And I also bought books. I have thousands of books that I have never read. My wife started complaining about all the CDs and books. I stopped buying them. But then I turned my attention to trainers. That caused more problems between my wife and me. She told me that I had to stop. I had to stop buying things or she would leave me. And did she leave you? No. I'm happy to say she didn't leave me. Oh, that's good. Compulsive shopping disorder is generally a woman's condition, though, isn't it, Maria? I don't know, to be honest. A lot of people think that, but studies show that although there are more women compulsive shoppers, the number of men with the problem is increasing. And do you think women and men buy different things? I mean, do women buy more clothes? Yes, I think there is a difference between men and women. I think women tend to buy clothes and shoes, while men buy CDs, tools, electrical goods. Well, that is very interesting. I'd like to thank both of my guests for coming on the show and talking to us about a growing problem. Next week. Two point two. Food and drink. Toiletries and cosmetics. Electrical goods. Market research. Special offer. Good value. Far East. Three point one. One. Crossroads. Two. Roundabout. Three. Underground. Four. Playground. Five. Traffic lights. Six. Sports ground. Seven. Town hall. Eight. Police station. Nine. Traffic Warden. 10. Sports Program. 11. Town Centre. 12. Policewoman.
3.2 Go out of the railway station, turn left and then take the first right by the church on the corner. Go straight down the road until you come to a crossroads with some traffic lights. Turn left, go past the monument on your right and then you'll come to a roundabout. Go right at the roundabout and you'll find it at the bottom of the road, just to the left of the bridge. Three point three. Excuse me. Yes. How do I get to the town hall? I'm afraid I'm lost. The town hall. Uh, let me think. Okay. Go out of the park, turn left, and walk past the playground. After a few minutes, you'll come to a roundabout. Um, let me think. Yes. At the roundabout, go straight on until you come to a bridge over the river at the bottom of the road. Stay on this side of the river and turn right. Go straight on for a while, and then I think you'll see the town hall on the next corner. Thank you very much. Three point four. Part one. So, how was your road trip on the famous Route 66 then? Anna, it was absolutely fantastic. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Tell me more. Where did you start? Well, we hired a car and started in Chicago. Then we drove over to Los Angeles on the West Coast. Wow. How many miles did you drive? In total... <sighs> Hmm. In total, it was 2,448 miles. 2,448? Really? <laughs> yep. And how long did that take you? 16 days. 16 days. Wait, that's... Uh, that's about 150 miles a day, right? That's not very fast. No, it isn't, but Route 66 isn't a big motorway. It's only a normal road. Oh, right. And because you can't drive fast in America, you see more. You really had a good time, didn't you? I did. I did, yeah. It was a fantastic holiday. A really good one. 3.5 Part two. You really had a good time, didn't you? I did. I did, yeah. It was a fantastic holiday. A really good one. And what were the best bits? <sighs> That's a difficult question. We saw and did a lot on those 16 days. Mm, I, I really love St. Louis. St. Louis is a pretty big city on the Mississippi River. That's the biggest river in the US, isn't it? Yeah. It's big, really big. We went out on a paddle boat and we saw that famous arch. That famous arch? What famous arch? The Arch of St. Louis. It's a famous monument. It's almost 200 metres high. Wow, that is high. And what other things did you see? Well, we went to this amazing place near Amarillo in Texas. We wanted to visit this crazy monument called Cadillac Ranch. Cadillac Ranch? Yeah. It was built by a Texan millionaire. It's made of ten cars. They're all Cadillacs. They're buried nose down in the ground. <laughs> Sounds crazy. Yeah, crazy, but cool. And you can put graffiti on them. Can you imagine that? You can cover them in graffiti. <laughs> After that, we went to the Grand Canyon National Park to see the canyon. Oh, the Grand Canyon. I've always wanted to go there. It was wonderful. It's beautiful. Very beautiful. Imagine this place. It's 227 miles long, and in some places it's a mile deep. 3.6 Have you been here before? No, I haven't. Well, I think you'll like it. 
It's the best Greek restaurant I've ever been to outside Greece. I've never eaten Greek food before. So prepare to enjoy yourself. You're going to love it. Shall I order several dishes for us? Then you can try some different things. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Waiter! Are you ready to order, sir? Yes. Could we have the, um, souvlaki and spetsofai, please? Certainly. Any salads with that? I think we'll have tzatziki and a Greek salad, please. Would you like anything to drink? Shall we have some wine, Claire? That would be lovely. Red, please. A bottle of the house red, please. Thank you, sir. Four point two. Part two. Hmm. This souvlaki is delicious, Socrates. What meat is it exactly? It's pork, actually. You haven't tried the spetsofai yet. That's the spicy sausage with peppers. Hmm. It's too spicy for me, I'm afraid. I don't like hot food. Oh. Sorry, I, I didn't know. No problem. You like it anyway. Uh, what's this? Tzatziki, yogurt and cucumber salad. Let's see. Oh, no! They've put too much garlic in. <coughs> Could I have some water, please? <laughs> They haven't put enough in for me. I love garlic. Well, I don't like garlic much, actually. The Greek salad and the souvlaki are lovely, though. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed some of the food. Would you like to see the dessert menu, sir? Claire, would you like something? Oh no, thanks. I couldn't eat another thing. Could I have a coffee, please? Okay. Could we have two filter coffees, please? Oh, and could you bring us the bill too? Certainly, sir. Four point three. One. Wood. Two. Shall. Three. Enough. Four. Juice. Four point four. One. Would. Count. Could. Book. Two. Shall. Champagne. Chant. Pancake. Three. Enough. Rough. Cough. Hungry. Four. Juice. Root. Boil. Fruit. Five point one. Right then, girls. Have you decided what you're going to do to get fit? How about you, Heidi? Yeah, I have actually. I really like water sports, but want to try something different. So I'm going to have a go at underwater rugby. <laughs> oh, Heidi, you're joking! Isn't that for men? A bit violent for you. No, it isn't. Dave. Why do you think girls can't do anything? Girls can't play football, you know. It's not a sport for girls. <sighs> Heidi, do you think it's good for girls to play basketball? Wake up, Dave. Girls can play golf. Girls can swim. Girls can climb mountains. Girls. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Anyway, back to underwater rugby. Not many people play it, so most teams are mixed. Men and women. <laughs> well, I've never heard of it. 
rugby and water. I just can't imagine it. Yeah, well, you wear a mask and snorkel and flippers, and you use a ball, a ball filled with salt water. And what do they do for the um, the you know the goal? Oh, they use a heavy metal bin. A bin is placed at either end of the pool, and that's the goal. Uh, aren't you afraid of getting hurt? Oh, Dave, stop it! Stop what? Stop the. Aren't you afraid of getting hurt? Anyway, no, I'm not afraid of getting hurt. You play the game under water, so you can't really hurt yourself. I'm having my first lesson tomorrow evening. Have you got all the gear? Not yet. I'm going to go to the sports shop later. Sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. And how about you, Barrett? Are you going to do anything? I'm not sure yet. I might play volleyball or tennis. I enjoyed those sports at school. Why don't you come with me and try something new? I'm going to play sepak takraw. <laughs> What? <laughs> sepak takraw. It's really popular in Asia. It's rather like volleyball. Only you can't hit the ball with your hands or arms. You use your legs and feet. You use your legs and feet. That sounds impossible. Yeah, it's pretty hard to do, and you've got to be quite fit. Come with me instead, Barrett. We'll have some fun. <laughs> to be honest, Heidi, I'm not a very good swimmer. I don't like going under water, so I might try sepak. What's it? <laughs> Especially if it's like volleyball. <laughs> well, we're meeting at the gym on Wednesday at seven p.m. Okay, I've decided. I'm going to try sepak takraw. Five point two. One. Largest. Cyclist. Fastest. Two. Challenging. Marathon. Badminton. Three. Ski. Easy. Team. Four. Win. Instruct. Business. Five. Play. Break. Race. Six point one. One. Babu Wahidi. I was born in Afghanistan, but grew up in the city of Bradford. There were a lot of people from different countries living in the area, so the primary school I attended was a multicultural school. There were children from India, Turkey, and Afghanistan in my class. The teachers were really good. They were caring, open-minded, and patient. I liked the school and had a good time there. I think I was sometimes treated differently at secondary school because I was Afghan. Nothing terrible, but I was called bad names by some of the students. This changed when they realised I could play football. I played in the school football team, and the situation improved. Two, Joe Albright. My childhood was spent on a farm in Shropshire. I really remember two things about growing up there. The first was the feeling of freedom, for example, being able to run across the fields. I had jobs to do, like feeding the chickens and helping with the harvest, but I could also ride my bike all over the place or go for a ride on my horse. In that way, I was very lucky. The other thing, the second thing I remember, was not positive. I often felt lonely because there were no other children living nearby to play with. I didn't have the company of brothers or sisters either. That was difficult during school holidays. Three, Carrie Hutton. My dad was in the army, and because Dad was in the army. We lived in a lot of different parts of the world. 
and I changed schools a lot. I made new friends, and then left them after only a year, sometimes even six months. We stayed in Cairo for three years when I was a teenager, and I had some really good friends there. It was hard to say goodbye. At first, I was angry with my father, and didn't try to make friends at my new school in Dubai. But in the end, I did. I made new friends. I guess the good thing about moving around was that I learned several languages, and I also learned how to make friends easily. Now, starting a new job or moving to a new town doesn't worry me at all. In fact, I can't imagine staying in one place for too long. Six point two. Yeah, well, my two kids are quite different from each other. People don't believe them when they say they're brother and sister. Jill's the oldest at sixteen, and she's tall and slim with blonde hair, whereas Paul at fourteen is rather short and overweight. He really likes his food and doesn't like sport. I get angry with him for spending so much time in front of his computer. Jill's the sporty one in the family and plays volleyball and tennis. She's friendly and outgoing and is always out at the weekends, either playing in a match or shopping with friends. I hope Paul will start going out more soon, but he says he doesn't want to. He's very shy. Still, at least they both like swimming and go twice a week. Neither of them likes reading much. But they both enjoy going to the cinema, and sometimes do that together. Six point three. One. Ralph and I both like playing sport, but neither of us likes watching it on TV. Two. All of my friends are Linkin Park fans. Three. None of us is very patient. Six point four. One. Both of us. Two. All of them. Three. Neither of them. Four. None of us. Five. Many of you. Seven point one. Right. I'll show you your room. It's not very big, but it's clean and bright. You've got a little TV. And you've got a nice view out of the window here. Oh yeah, that's nice. And you share the bathroom with the gentleman who lives in the next room. That's fine for me. Now, there are a few house rules that you have to follow. Okay. This is a non-smoking house, so I'm afraid you can't smoke in any of the rooms. That's okay. I don't smoke anyway. No, <laughs> that's good. And you can cook your food downstairs in the kitchen, but not after eight o'clock in the evening because that's when I cook my dinner. That's no problem. Anything else? No, not really. Do you have any questions?、Mm, yes, it's a bit cold in here. Is the heating off? <laughs> yes. Don't worry about that. It comes on at six in the morning and goes off at nine when everyone goes to work. Then it comes on again at six o'clock at night.、Huh. The heating bills are included in the rent. Is that okay with you? Yes, that's fine. Good. Well, I'm sure you'll be very comfortable here. So, how much do I have to pay in advance? The first two months' rent, please. Two months. Oh, okay. Eight point one. So, what subjects are you going to choose next year?
It's difficult. I can't decide. What about you? Well, I know the subjects I'm not going to choose. Really? Yes. I don't really like history. No. No. I'm interested in the future, not the past. Oh. I quite like history. In fact, I think I might take history next year. I'm interested in the past. It was more exciting than the present, anyway. Why don't you do Latin as well, then? Oh, no. I don't know why people study Latin. No? No. It's a dead language. Nobody speaks it. But what about you? If you're interested in the future, what about IT? <laughs> IT? Are you joking? I can't see the point of IT classes. No? Why? Everyone knows how to use a computer these days. That's not true. A lot of people can't use a computer. Well, I know how to use one, so why study it? Because it might help you to find a job. In fact, I think I might take IT as well as history. That's a good idea. This is great. I've made three decisions already. Eight point two. One. Change. Cheap. Approach. Chemistry. Two. Check. Attention. Optional. Share. Three. Relationship. Traditional. Machine. Teacher. Nine point one. Conversation one. Hello there. Are you okay? No, not really. I've got a terrible headache. And a sore throat. It hurts when I swallow. Oh, you poor thing! Have you taken anything for it? Well, I took an aspirin, but it still hurts.、Mm. Maybe you should go to see a doctor.、Mm, I don't like going to the doctors. Well, you ought to go if your headache's still bad. And why don't you take some throat sweets? Here, I've got some in my bag. Go on, try them. Thanks. Mmm. Oh yeah, that's nice. Conversation two. Hey, are you okay? Oh. Oh dear, I feel really dizzy. Here, why don't you sit down for a minute?、Mm. Shall I get you a glass of water? What? Oh,、uh, yes, please. Thanks.、Yeah. Here you are. Is that better?、Mm. Yes, a little, thanks. Oh, I don't know what happened. I just suddenly felt very weak and couldn't stand up.、Mm. Perhaps you ought to see the nurse. Have you eaten anything today? Well, I had a piece of toast on the way to the office. And it's now five in the afternoon. You should eat something.、Mm. Nine point two. Part one. I'm delighted to welcome to the program today, Dr. Emil Aziz, who specialises in Down syndrome research. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming. Now, Dr. Aziz, I've read that one in every one thousand babies born in the UK will have Down syndrome or DS. Yes, yes, that's correct. About one in every thousand. And do you think that people, well, that most people, really understand this condition? Well, Georgia, one of the problems is that people often think that Down syndrome is a mental illness. It is not. It is a condition that occurs before birth. It is not a disease. The person is not ill, and so does not suffer from the condition. But they do have learning difficulties, don't they? Well. That's not an easy question to answer. Yes, a person with Down syndrome will have some difficulty in learning, 
but some people will have more problems and some people will have less. Most people will learn to talk, read and write, and many go to ordinary schools and lead enjoyable, semi-independent lives. Well, that's important to know. And how about physical problems? People with Down syndrome usually have physical disabilities, don't they? Ah, another mistaken belief. They do have certain physical characteristics that make them look different. For example, their faces may look different. So, people often think this means they are also stupid. Really? And people sometimes think they can't do things like walk and play games. But the public need to realize that people with DS just look different. They are people, however, like you and me. Most of them are very healthy, active and strong. Yes, that's important to know. And talking of being healthy, active and strong, can you tell us about these football clubs here in London? Yes, there are three football teams in London. The Fulham Badgers, QPR Tiger Cubs and Charlton Upbeats. They are all doing very well and the players are enthusiastic and hard-working. I've been told that they're the only teams whose players are never late for training. Oh, that's fantastic. So, doesn't anyone with DS ever have a physical disability? Yes, sometimes. But this is often caused by another problem, not by DS itself. Thanks to research and the wonderful work done by many charities and support groups throughout the UK, Children with Down syndrome can get the right care and education to lead active lives, and an increasing number are able to then work in the community. Nine point three. Part two. Can you give us an example, Doctor Aziz, of someone who has done just that? Certainly. The story of Ruth Cromer is well known to anyone involved with DS. She attended school, succeeded in learning to read and write, did not listen to teachers who told her she couldn't do things, and taught herself to type. She became an actress and has been on TV several times. She also writes articles and gives speeches about the condition. Amazing. Dr. Aziz, that was extremely interesting. Thank you for coming to talk to us and making us more aware that people with Down syndrome are people first and foremost. Thank you for inviting me, Georgia. 9.4 Central Musical Industrial Physical Unbelievable, enjoyable, reliable, curable. Nine point five. One. The flat is really central. Two. Most kids are pretty musical. Three. That part of town is really industrial. Four. Rugby's a very physical game. Five. That's unbelievable. Six. The course was enjoyable. Seven. The cars they make are very reliable. Eight. A lot of diseases are curable. Ten point one. Speaker one. I want to relax on holiday and not run around after the kids all the time, so a place with a babysitting service is my first choice. To be honest, 
I'm not the outdoor type who likes sitting in a tent. I prefer the comfort of a hotel bar and heated pool. Free Wi-Fi access is also useful so that I can check my messages from work. Speaker 2 We like a certain amount of comfort, but don't want the fixed timetable of hotel breakfasts as we like sleeping in. So we rent an apartment in a small block about a hundred metres from the beach. We always go in the low season, so it's cheaper. And as regular customers, we get a reduced rate. It's also quieter, which is nice. The furniture's fairly basic, but the cooking facilities are good, and there's a barbecue outside. Speaker 3 It's a great way to travel around and see different places without spending too much money. Of course, the quality of the facilities differs from one hostel to another, but they're usually fairly clean. I'll look at online forums before going to see what other travellers say about a place. You know, whether the showers are clean, how many people you have to share a room with, what the kitchen's like, things like that. Then I make a plan of which ones to go to and which to avoid. Speaker 4 There's nothing like sleeping in a tent, and it's actually quite comfortable. OK, you need to prepare your equipment beforehand, but it's worth it. We go to an organised campsite, as we're a family, and there's a shower block and washing facilities there. There are usually other families there, so the kids find other children to play with. The place we usually go to also provides meals on site, so if I don't feel like cooking one evening, there's that option. 10.2 Conversation 1 Reception, can I help you? Hello, Mr. Wiseman here, room 214. I'm not happy with my room. Could you give me another one? I would if there was one available, sir, but I'm afraid we're fully booked this weekend. What seems to be the problem? Perhaps we can sort it out. The air conditioning's on too high. It's freezing in here. No problem, sir. Just turn it down. Well, I might be able to if I could find the switch. It's on the wall by the door. Well, I can't... Oh, wait. Just a second. Uh, yes, found it. I'd put my coat over it. Thanks very much. Conversation 2 Reception. Oh, hello. I'm Mrs Arnold from room 304. Could you send someone up, please? My husband's stuck in the bathroom. Oh, dear. Is the door locked, madam? No, it's stuck. I've tried pushing it, but it won't move. Right. Wait a moment. I'll see if someone's available. Jeff? Can you send someone up to 304? The bathroom door's stuck. Really? Well, can't you go? Oh, I see. Well, as soon as you can, then. Mrs Arnold? Yes? I I'm afraid my colleague's very busy right now. It'll be about ten minutes. But what are we going to do? My husband's the main speaker at the charity dinner, and it starts in five minutes. Call the manager, please. I'll see what I can do, Mrs. Arnold. Conversation 3 Hello, reception. Oh, uh, hello. It's Mr. Dominguez here in the executive suite. I wonder if you could help me. If I can, sir, certainly. What's the problem? Oh, no problem, exactly. It's our wedding anniversary, and I didn't have time to buy my wife a present. Is there anything I could order from here? If I were you, I'd order a big bouquet of red roses. Uh, we have an arrangement with a local flower shop. I could phone them for you. Lovely idea. 
Could you order them for me then and have them sent up to the room? Certainly, sir. Great. Thanks a lot. Ten point three. Used to. Usually. Useful. Beautiful. Cute. Umbrella. Uninteresting. Summer. Suntan. Done. Ten point four. Double O three O. Two five one O. Three six seven five four. Two four two one O. Eight nine five six seven. Six nine seven nine O one O two five nine. Mr. Kendall, that's K E N D A L L. Mrs. Tsiakos, that's T S I A K O S. Miss Pandy, that's P A N D H I. Eleven point one. And on a happier note, a young scientist from Yorkshire has discovered a clever way to help people in the poorer countries of Africa. Emily Cummins, aged twenty-one. Has invented a fridge that works without electricity, and she did it in her granddad's garden shed. The fridge works using the sun's energy. Emily won five thousand pounds from York Merchant Adventurers for her design, and took a year off from her studies to go to Africa and test out her idea. She helped make more than fifty electricity-free refrigerators during the trip. Using such materials as recycled car parts, and the locals named her the Fridge Lady. Emily said that she hopes to continue inventing and making changes for a better world. More good news now on the little boy who went missing yesterday. Four-year-old Tommy Jones has been found alive and well. He went missing from his home near Burnham Woods yesterday afternoon with his two Labrador puppies. His family were worried that he had run away. However, searchers found both him and the dogs safe this morning. They were fast asleep under a tree. Tommy told his mother that the puppies had kept him warm all night. He is now resting at home. His mother Anna. Said that she's delighted he's safe, but she's going to lock the garden gate in future. And finally, the weather forecast: heavy rain will spread across the south of England today. Floods are expected in some parts, so if you are driving, be very careful. Telephone the Environment Agency floodline for the latest warnings. Eleven point two. Study. Shortage. Extinct. Explore. Invent. Protect. Research. Energy. Natural. Solution. Pollution. Resources. Experiment. Investigate. Participant. 
Population. Twelve point one. Hello, the Ashley Corporation. Could I speak to Mr. Khalil, please? Who's speaking, please? It's Tina Morrison. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Khalil is working at home today. Can I take a message? Yes, please. Could you tell him that I called? It's Tina Morrison. It's about our meeting next Thursday. I'm sorry, but I'm going to be away on business that day. So can we change the meeting to Friday? The same time, three o'clock at my office. He knows where it is. If there are any problems, tell him to call my mobile on o eight eight nine seven six five seven six five four eight. Thanks. I'll pass that message on to him. Thanks. Bye. Twelve point two. One. Polite. Possible. Two. Possible. Common. Three. Common. Comfortable. Four. Obtain. Opinion. Five. Whole. Hold. Six. Operation. Remote. Twelve point three. Thank you for calling Lucibello Bank. You now have four options. To check your current bank balance, press one. For information about opening a new account, press two. For technical support with our internet banking services, press three. For all other queries or to speak to an advisor, press four. Thank you for calling Lucibello Bank. Your call is important to us. A member of our dedicated customer services team will be available to speak to you shortly. Please note that calls may be recorded for training purposes. Unfortunately, we are currently experiencing a high volume of calls, and your call is being held in a queue. Your wait time at the moment is approximately twelve minutes. You may find it more convenient to call back later. Thank you for calling Lucibello Bank. Your call is important to us. Thirteen point one. Have you found the website, Appa? Yes, here it is. Now let's see what's on. Films showing now. There's that new thriller, Run and Hide, directed by Antonio Torres. Andreas Dumas is in it. It's supposed to be good.、Mm, I've heard it's nothing special. Kate went and saw it last Friday, and she said she was bored. It was too predictable. She said she knew who the killer was long before the end. Okay. Well. Then how about the Mansford saga? Jeffrey Hines is in it.、Mm, I like him. What's it about? It's a family drama set in 1860. They're rich, but they lose their money, and then have to struggle to survive. Sounds interesting. Zena Williams is in it too. It sounds boring to me. Isn't there anything lighter on, like a comedy, for instance?、Mm, right. Here's one. Mr. Pickles, starring Thierry Dumas and Catherine Picard, wasn't he in that film we saw a couple of weeks ago? The Party Goer. Yes, he's good. Shall we go and see that then? Okay, 
It's on at the palace in Walker Street. That's not far. We can walk there. What time does it start? The first showing is at three, and then there's another one at five thirty. Let's go to the five thirty one. Then I'll take you to that nice Italian place afterwards. They do a great carbonara. Okay, Brad. Great. Thirteen point two. Excited. Bored. Tired. Disappointed. Interested. Starred. Amazed. Treated. Played. Surprised. Directed. Recorded. Fourteen point one. Morning. Have you got everything ready? Of course not. I've only just arrived. What do we need today? Well, we have to clean the carpets in the lobby, so we'll need the vacuum cleaner.、Hmm. Where's that then? Usual place, under the stairs. Right. And we've got to clean the marble floor in the dining room. So we'll need the mop and bucket. That's in the cupboard behind the reception area, and we'll also need a cloth. Because we've got to wipe all the mirrors. And remind me, where do we keep the cloths? In the drawer in the staff room, of course. Oh yeah. And we also need a hammer and some nails because we have to put up a picture. And where do we keep those? Down in the cellar. Oh yes, it's dark down there, isn't it? We'll need, we'll need, what do you call it? Uh, uh, what are you talking about? Well, the light doesn't work down there, so we'll need a, you know,、uh, we'll need a.、Uh... Fourteen point two. One. Class. Two. Gave. Three. Bin. Four. Pair. Five. Gold. Six. Could. Seven. Ban. Eight. Pad. Nine. Goal. Ten. Pouring. Fourteen point three. Hi, Jean Paul. So, how was Rachel's trip to Scotland? Oh, hi, Johnny. Yeah, she had a great time, but she brought me back this really strange present. Really? What's it like? Well, it's a bit like a handbag. But you wear it round your waist. Round your waist. Yes, it's made of leather, and apparently in Scotland men wear them. Oh, I know what it is. Does it have three tassels on the front? Tassels? Yes, extra bits of leather that hang down. Yes, it does.、Mm, it's called a sporran. It's a traditional part of Scottish dress. You wear it with a kilt. A sporran. How do you know that? Fifteen point one. So you're moving to Prague, but I thought you liked living here. I do, but if Miguel and I get married, I want him to know something about my country, and to understand the culture, the language, and so on. Can't you just go for a holiday? You don't learn much from a holiday, Carlos. No, we've decided to go for two or three years and then see where we prefer to live and bring up a family. Okay, 
But the cost of living's really high in Prague, isn't it? Not much higher than it is here in Argentina. Also, unemployment has fallen there in the last few years and is lower than it is here. So I think we'll find jobs fairly easily. But the economy is doing better here now, though. And you get paid quite well, don't you? Yes, Carlos. It's not that I don't like it here. I'm happy and have a good quality of life. But things are getting more expensive and it's not easy to buy a house here. In the Czech Republic, house prices are generally cheaper and so are cars. Perhaps, but eating out is cheaper here. And as you told me, you can't beat the nightlife here. <laughs> True, but I'm thinking more of the future. The salaries are higher in Prague. I could get paid more for doing the same job as I'm doing now. Do you think Miguel will like it there? I have no idea. That's why I want him to try it. Don't worry, Carlos. You're not going to lose your best friend. I just think it's important for us to see where we are both happier. And we can't do that if we don't try living in both countries. Anyway, you can come and visit. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Fifteen point two. What are you doing, Isabel? Oh, just paying some bills. What? You're paying them online? I didn't know you could do that. Yes, it's easy too. You can do it through your bank or the service itself. I pay my phone bill to the phone company's bill payment service on its website. Really? It must save you a lot of time. Yes, and it's good for the environment too. You don't use any paper. I pay my mortgage and electricity through the online banking service. I just order the bank to transfer the amount each month. Mm, is it safe, though? I mean, don't you worry about someone stealing your bank details and then taking all your money? Well, there are some risks, but we change ID numbers and security codes fairly often, so they're difficult to copy. You should try it, Primo. It would be much easier for you. Mm, perhaps I'll try it myself. I hate standing in the queue for hours waiting to pay the electricity bill. And then I often can't understand what the cashier says. The Scottish accent is not easy. <laughs> I know. This way it only takes you a few minutes and no need to talk. <laughs> Sounds great. 15.3 1. Buy a house when the price is right and pay your bills online. 2. Take out a loan to buy your own home, then owe the bank money until you grow old. 3. Twenty-five pounds for a meal may not sound much, but is a large amount for a pizza. 4. I got paid a good wage for my job in sales and was able to save for a holiday in Wales. 16.1 So, what kind of party is it going to be? It's your birthday, isn't it? Yes, it's my 21st birthday. So I want something big and noisy. With lots of people? How many do you want to invite? Oh, at least a hundred. OK. And what sort of venue do you want? Have you seen somewhere you like? Mm, I don't know. Have you got any suggestions? I know a really good new nightclub in a shopping mall just out of town. Oh, no. I don't think so. Can you think of anywhere else? Well, there's also a really good converted warehouse near the beach. You can get at least a hundred people in there. That sounds great. And are you going to serve any food? How about a cold buffet? Yeah, a cold buffet is good. 
And what kind of music would you like? Well, definitely not background music. I want a really good DJ and I want it to be loud. <laughs> no problem. And what time do you want the party to finish? It will be late, won't it? <laughs> no earlier than three. Shall we say three to four in the morning? Yeah, that's great. Sixteen point two. One. With lots of people? Oh, yes, at least a hundred. Two. How about a cold buffet? Yep, a cold buffet's good. Three. Shall we say three to four in the morning? Yeah, that's great. 16.3 1. Where did you go last night? 2. Did you see what she was wearing? 3. Why were you so rude to him? 4. Have you been here before? 5. How many people here do you know? Six. Are you going to eat something? Seven. Who's that man in the sunglasses near the bar? Eight. Do you have the time? Sixteen point four. Now, this room contains the famous Bayer Tapestry. As you can see, at this end, it shows the events leading to the Norman invasion of England in 1066. As we walk round, you'll see the Norman sea journey to England, the Battle of Hastings itself, and the death of King Harold. We're not sure exactly when the tapestry was made, but it dates from the 11th century. One legend says that it was made by William the Conqueror's wife, Queen Matilda. However, many historians now think that King William's brother paid for the tapestry to be made. This is the original tapestry, but there is also a copy at the Museum of Reading in England. Right. Are there any questions so far?